Okay. Um, just want to read from Luke 5. <clears throat> okay. Um, this is something that we've, we know, the incident that happened in the life of Jesus as he's ministering. Luke chapter 5 and uh, verses 4 and 5. Okay. So when he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Okay, so um, do we all know the you know the backstory to all this that uh, that Simon Peter and his friends they are fishing all night they catch nothing but they come to um, uh, you know uh, the Lord Jesus is there and he's been he's been preaching ministering and he says uh, he uses Simon's boat uh, to get into the water and then speak. And then he gives this instruction again. He asked him to do something which Simon had done before, but um, it was, uh, which means he had toiled all night. He had done something out of his experience, out of his ability. Um, and the Lord is asking him to do the same thing again, but this time it's coming from him, right? And and the you know the difference is that here there is a boatload of catch, and it says here in verse six they caught a great number of and then it was breaking. So um, for us, something to take back is that uh, maybe the Lord is, um, I don't know if the Lord is instructing us or leading us to do something that maybe we didn't fail, right? We didn't fail earlier. We did it in our own strength, in our own ability. Maybe we did it maybe without including the Lord in it, without his wisdom, without his leading. But Maybe the Lord is leading us to do something, and our, you know, our natural reasoning and logic is uh, is just resisting it completely, because our experience says this is not working, this will not work, or we've done it before and it's it, it it I failed in it, so I don't think I should ever get into it, right? Um, but uh, here's the Lord, and he's uh, and it is coming from him the instruction. So for us to discern, you know, is the Lord leading me? Is the Lord leading me to do certain things uh, that, was, that I was involved in, but without much success and effort, uh, because the Lord was not in it, right? Maybe out of my good intention, I got into it, but then uh, I was not successful. So to ask ourselves, what is the Lord leading us into? What is the Lord taking us into and instructing us, saying, you do those things, and but this time it's different because he is with us. This time it's different because his word uh, has come, a quickened word has come, right? So uh, it's good to ask us of what is the Lord, you know, leading us into, taking us into, where my mind is rejecting that because of my experience. My mind is saying, you know, I had a failure in that. Uh, it could be ministry, you know, it could be maybe an area of ministry. It could be preaching, teaching. It could be you know, ministering in prayer and healing, evangelism, whatever. You know, we're saying that, uh, you know, I did it, but um, uh, I was not successful in it. I was not fruitful in it. So I'm never, ever going to do that again. Maybe you just said, you know, I'm not going to do that again. I'm tired. I'm, you know, I don't want to get to that again. But the Lord is leading in this time. It is the Lord's leading. Right? It is, he, it's his word, which is coming to us. And um, maybe the Lord is leading us into it. So uh, like Peter, if we would say, yes, Lord, I try, I've done it. I was very unsuccessful, but since you are asking me, right? So which means that we discern, we hear his voice, we discern and we obey and say, Lord, since you are asking, right? Um, so that to make sure, is the Lord asking? Is the Lord leading? Right? Since you are asking, uh, I will do it, right? So um, let's just pray and ask the Lord, Lord, what is it that you are you know, if, if if there is something in our life like that, you know, to to really discern and say, Lord, uh, if it is you, yeah, I will do it, and I know that um, it'll be a good thing um, and for your glory, because um, it'll be fruitful, right? So let's pray. Father, we we thank you for this day, Lord. Even as we come at this day into your mighty hands, we thank you that you are the Lord of heaven and earth. Lord, we thank you that uh, you know our past, our present, and our future, God. Uh, we know that, uh, Lord, you want us uh, to live our lives and not uh, tied down to our past, Lord, our past failures, our past experiences, Lord, which didn't work out. So, um, Lord, you don't want uh, us to take that into the future. And, Lord, even as you are in the future, even as you are the one who's leading us, Lord, 
Lord, we we pray and ask for sensitivity in our spirit right now. Lord, we pray and ask that our ears will be open, Lord, to the voice of the shepherd. Lord, we ask that even as you lead us, Lord, Lord, even as you instruct us and in specific things to to sometimes go back and do those things which we did earlier. Um, but Lord, this time it's different because it's your word. It's your instruction which is leading us. And Lord, we pray that may we experience the power, may we experience the power of the truth of your instruction, God. And uh, yes, Lord, and I just pray that even as you lead us into those things, God, we pray that uh, it'll, be, it'll be wonderful, it'll be glorious, and bringing glory and honor to your name, Lord. Yes, Master, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Okay. Um, okay, let's do a, a quick uh, thing. So we, uh, last class we were talking about communication and how important it is to know our, uh, you know, our audience, um, like the life orientation, just, uh, you know, to whatever extent possible, right? So if we do that, then we are going to be even more well prepared, and also it's going to be, uh, um, it's going to be a little more effective than when you go in totally unprepared, uh, or you, you know, uh, when you go in not knowing who the audience is like especially when it comes to uh, maybe their age group maybe their uh, life orientation etc okay so um so uh, let's continue with that um uh, and let's i think we're looking at the last one right yeah um, uh, yeah so about communication so communication um what it does is uh, it uh, evokes something evokes means it draws out something like in us Okay, what does it evoke? It evokes certain reactions, right? Uh, that's for sure. Okay, because I'm sure you've heard of, you know, now with social media, there's a lot of motivational talks, inspiring talks, right? Um, and you hear those clips, and it's, you know, all these words evoke certain emotions out of us, right? Draw out certain, or um, stir up certain emotions, right? So words are powerful. Right. Uh, words inspire. Words also break down. Right. Uh, words can discourage, break down completely. So words are powerful, um, and we need to understand that. Right. Uh, and when we use words rightly, when we use language rightly, it it will actually uh, it'll be a powerful instrument. Right. Um, but but we can misuse words also. Right. Like some of the people did. In the past, you know, like uh, some world leaders, though they misused words in order to stir up, they can actually stir up rebellion, stir up hatred, enmity, right? They can misuse that, manipulate uh, people's emotions uh, with words, right? So uh, that is very possible. Unfortunately, in ministry also, you know, people use words in order to either to force, intimidate, create fear, or manipulate. You know, draw on people's emotions and cause them to do do certain things. Right? Um, we need to be mindful of that. You know, am I? My words have power, and uh, and I'm communicating something. So, you know, to be mindful of that. Uh, one scripture that we can look at, uh, which talks about that, Ephesians four, right? Ephesians four, and uh, verse is it twenty eight or twenty nine? Um. Okay, Ephesians 4, 29. Okay. It says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. Oh, we've, we've seen this verse before, right? Let no unedifying talk, unwholesome word or corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for edification, necessary edification? Okay, so what is necessary edification? Something that builds up the hearer, right? So uh, some, that is constructive, something that builds. And that it may impart grace to the hearer. What is grace? Unmerited favor. What else? Okay. But okay, I think that's unmerited favor. 
<laughs> okay. But grace also means enablement. Yeah, strength, uh, strength or empowerment. It's divine enablement, right? We say, you know, about the gifts of the Spirit, these are gifts of grace, charis, right? So gifts of grace. So they are, it, it's divine enablement, divine empowerment. So what, um, you know, what Paul is saying is that when you use the right words, it's going to bring an impartation of grace, a divine enablement. Right, especially when you're handling scripture and when you're communicating the truth of uh, God's word, uh, God confirms it, and there is a divine enablement, empowerment, uh, strength that comes to the hearer. Okay, and that's why you know the declaration of God's word, right? When we're declaring the truth of God's word, right? These are wholesome words, this is the truth, and it brings an impartation of grace. To the hearer. Okay, so uh, the opposite can happen. You hear negative words over and over and over again. You're speaking negative words over, you know, over ourselves, over others. Uh, there's an there's a the opposite of that that's happening. Right? It's breaking down. It's tearing down people's self-esteem. It's bringing fear. It's breaking people's confidence. All that can happen. Right. So the thing is this: uh, when we communicate. It evokes or draws out uh, it, one one thing can be you know affective meanings or cognitive meanings others which means that affective means moods and feelings and emotions cognitive you know people are informed there's learning there's uh, uh, there's wisdom so it it produces that uh, in people so communication is powerful right communication is powerful so especially when you are handling the word of God. And speaking the word of God, you know, it brings about so much hope, so much, and and it's not wishful thinking, right? It's not just hope for the sake of okay, now I'm feeling good, uh, and tomorrow I'll feel bad, I'll come back again and feel good. No, it's not like that, right? It's it's uh, it's something powerful that will change the circumstance, right? We go and do certain things in line with the word, just like how we read in Luke chapter five that it changes when we act on, when we obey. With, uh, it's we see the power or experience the miraculous power of the truth of God's word. Okay, so we uh, so we looked at communication. We looked at it being um, it's two ways. It's sent, and we look at some of the elements of communication. So it's good for us to have this understanding. Okay, even as you are, uh, you know, if, if some of us are going to be maybe doing this, um, you know, uh, preaching. Uh, Etc. So, uh, so for us to understand this, okay. Um, so we won't make the same, uh, let's say, mistakes um, that you know when we 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 heard those you know things yesterday, right? In in last class about how those people are just saying, okay, we're just going to spread the words. We're going to you know sow the seed or throw the seed. If it falls. On good ground, it's fine. Otherwise, it's okay. So we won't make that mistake. You know, we'll be intentional uh, and remove all the unnecessary things which are which act like barriers. Right. So why are we doing it? So that we can be more eloquent and articulate. That's not the point. Right. We are doing it so that we can remove every hindrance from people or hindrance, uh, uh, you know, barriers that hinder people. From actually receiving the word of God, so that's the intent of you know uh, understanding this. It's not to make us look good or make us you know sound uh, eloquent and articulate and all that. It is so that we can remove all barriers, so people can receive the word that is preached clearly without any. You know, as it is, there are so many things, cultural barriers. You know, the way it's perceived. You say something, it produces different meaning in people. They understand things. All that is there. So. Why should we add to the barriers? Why should we add to the hindrance, right? Okay, so let's look at the functions of uh, language. Um, I'll just present the notes. Okay. Right? Okay, so uh, functions of language. One, it's in, it informs. 
okay when you when you use language when you either in written whatever form it informs people okay so people are uh, uh, you know taken from a place of maybe ignorance to being informed you know that's what happens when you read something read a newspaper um, or read an article you are informed okay so um, uh, with with the use of language we are informing people secondly it is it can be interrogative what does that mean interrogation you get information right you ask questions and maybe in the form of an interview you ask questions in the form of surveys um you can get information thirdly it's directive meaning giving instruction giving orders so you see you know these are different things but it's the same language uh, or the same words uh, or same words in the sense the words are being used for the same purpose uh, or different purposes right so we the report something we get information uh we can give instructions um and of course it's very expressive you know language enables us to express our emotions our feelings right uh, in other words give vent to our feelings right um so what is what you are feeling inside you're able to express or what you are excited about you're able to express what you are sad about you're able to express right um so these are some basic things but language enables us to do that right um what is the last one last one evocative meaning that it like we saw earlier it creates emotions in people and that's why you know when we combine words with melody or lyrics with melody it's very powerful in the form of a song right in the form of a tune you know it's powerful to the extent that yeah you know uh, it goes slips beyond your conscious thinking or mind where uh, you know sometimes you just find yourself humming a tune you're not able to get that out of your mind that right? you heard it somewhere or somebody just hummed it or you heard it on the you know on the bus or something it was being played and you're trying so hard to get it out but it's there you know just going repeating over and over again so um it's it's so powerful when you create words with melody right okay um let's move on let's look at uh, homiletics in the bible okay so now all this thing of preparing delivering uh, a message right so uh, was is it there in the bible you know is it there in scripture does it have a scriptural backing or is it something that you know the seminaries uh, you know came up with uh, yet another subject to add you know homiletics but we see that in the bible when we read through um, the the old testament and the new testament we see uh, that people actually they were inspired by the holy spirit to write but because of their experience or learnings you see that uh, the use of language the use of uh, picturesque language or illustrations and metaphors right they use that in the um, in, in in the pages of scripture we see that right um especially in the prophetic books and also when we look at books like proverbs ecclesiastes we see a lot of that lot of uh, the tools of the language right uh, for example we see metaphors we see idioms and phrases let's uh, let's look at a few um you know certain uh, certain usages uh, are there in scripture okay let's look at proverbs 2 and verse 7 uh, 7 and 8 so 7 probably okay uh, he stores up sound wisdom for the upright okay is talking about the lord uh, he stores up strong sound wisdom for the upright he is a shield to those who walk uprightly okay now what does that mean he is a shield it's a is a yeah but how so the usage is that it is um, a, you know it is a metaphor like is the lord a, is he a, like a shield no so we, we you know it's the literal thing is that right but um, the uh, the the because we're using a figure of speech so he is a shield so whatever the shield does the functions of the shield the lord does that's all it means so but you see that like in proverbs you see that okay um another place you know um um this is a usage let's say proverbs 6 and verse 16 these six things the lord hates yes seven are an abomination to him 
okay so they li list down uh, seven things proud look lying tongue hands that etc but it starts by it's a usage you know it's, it's just a the manner of uh, speaking like these six things the lord hates the seven are an abomination okay so we see things like that uh, right through scripture proverbs and also in ecclesiastes uh, where the words are used to, to literally paint a picture like um, in ecclesiastes what we read ecclesiastes 4 i think where we say um, yeah uh, 4 and verse 12 Right. Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Right, So immediately it creates that picture of a, a, a cord, a rope with those three strands. Right, It's not quickly broken, etc. So, um, so we see that this kind of usage is there in scripture. We see it in the in Proverbs and um, Proverbs 25, 11. Like apples of gold in settings of silver. Okay, can you just picture that? Right. Apples of gold in settings of silver. Golden apples in a silver, like a platter, right? Um, is a word spoken in right circumstances, etc. Right. So um, so well, yes, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write it, but we see all this, uh, all these figures of speech and all these tools of language in use there. Okay. And uh, yesterday we were looking at um, like uh, the stories, the power of stories, and how stories can really communicate. And the Lord Jesus, when he taught, he uses uh, you know the parables very powerfully. And we, after you know, like two millennia or so, it is still making sense to us. We are still teaching it, right? We are still studying it and it's a source of strength to us of course it's the eternal word of god uh, but you see those stories so simple earthly in nature practical in nature but conveying a you know very deep spiritual truth like very significant spiritual truth right so the lord uses um, you know so much of um, you know these tools of language you know for example if you look at point 3 in the notes um, it talks about defense okay so using reasons and using uh, 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 you know statements to defend one's point argument what is an argument our understanding of argument could be you know you are angrily fighting about something right that's that is it that's part of it but then argument is also reasonings or you know a list of reasonings which you present in order to prove something Right, like uh, for example, an advocate would argue for the case. Right? What does that mean? That is going to present, you know, one, two, three, four, five things why this person is innocent or why this person is, uh, you know, guilty. Right. So an argument, it just means a list of, uh, you know, statements or reasonings. Right. Logic, we understand that. You know, something practical, something that makes sense. Um, explanation, illustrations. What are illustrations? Examples, so it could be a story, it could be a, uh, uh, you know, uh, it could be something that you use in order to explain a point, right? You want to explain salvation and you use an illustration, explain faith, how faith works, you use an illustration. Okay, parables we saw. What are metaphors? Um, really? Oh. Hmm. See metaphor. He, see, we we just read just now. Yeah, we read just now. No, the Lord is a shield in battle. Hmm. He is a shield to all those who. So, which means that it is a uh, it it is an expression which describes the attribute of a person, right? So, uh, he was a lion in battle. What does that mean? He was fierce and brave. And in battle, it was lion in battle, right? Um, yeah. So and and other things like sorry, what, what are you saying, Anand? It's like tag, huh? Mm. Yeah, maybe <laughs> you can use it as a tag, but um, yeah, it actually describes the character of a person, right? Okay. So so the Lord used all that, uh, and and then people when they heard it, the, even the ones the 
you know the, the the guards who were sent the temple guards who were sent to arrest him they said they came back seven, saying that, uh, that no one spoke like this you've never heard anyone speak like this before right so uh, so so powerful uh, was this communication it must have been simple so everybody heard everybody could you know recall but it must have been very very uh, powerful as they said nobody spoke like him right okay then we also see some uh, some sermons in the Bible, right? Um, first one we can look at Acts chapter two. Okay, Acts chapter two. Um, the New Testament church is born, right? The people are filled with the Holy Spirit, and uh, Acts chapter two and verse fourteen. Peter's delivering the message, right? He stands up. He raises his voice and he says, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. Okay, and he gives a defense, first of all, you know, the reasonings. These are not drunk. Uh, and then he goes on to refer to uh, some of the scriptures that they were familiar with. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Okay, and then he goes on um, and, uh, and then he ends with, a, for the, with an altar call. Right, repent. Let every one of you be baptized. We see that in verse thirty-eight. Um, and for this promise is to you and to your children and all who are afar off, as long as are as as many as are, Lord our God will call. Okay. So, what are some observations that you can uh, you can make from this from this message? What are some things when you when you read through? Uh, maybe you as you read through, we can take some time to read read through this and. Um, what are some things that you can just observe, you know, learn from reading this? We are looking at Acts chapter 2. Okay, online students also. Acts chapter 2, uh, 14 to 39, right? Okay, let me just put it on the chat. Your question is in what way, whatever, whatever you're observing from this message. So this is a message. This is a sermon. So what do we un what do we learn from this? You, you can think in terms of um, okay, his speaking style, or maybe about Peter. What do you what do you learn from this sermon? Okay, he was very bold. Yeah, scriptures, right? So we we understand something about Peter that he was bold. He stood up. He took the initiative, and um, yeah, he was very uh, timid. He didn't want to confront. He ran away, and now we see he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, maybe that's first thing that we can. You know, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, empowered by the Spirit of God, and he stands up bold and he makes this declaration. Okay, that's one thing. Um, Yeah, he's yeah. So that's a, yeah. He's defending actually um, what is happening. He's giving an explanation, right? He's giving a defense of okay, this is this is not it, but this is it. Okay, but we also learn. Yeah, Sean. The people are not. The people are not, uh, not uh, drunk as you suppose. That means that most people might assume since it's nine o'clock, there might be some drunkards who are doing this and all because their actions might be similar. But he says it's not the case. So he's relating to them in that scenario too. Yeah, yeah. So that's the first thing he starts off with, right? Um, uh, kind of explains the situation, what is happening, and then because that is what has drawn the people, that is what the court is, well, that is what has caught their uh, attention. You know, they're like, you know, what's happening? All kinds of emotions. They are amazed, perplexed, confused, etc. They're making fun. So he just kind of you know, calms them, and um, uh, and. Like Jackin is saying, he's fully convinced and knows what he's speaking. We we kind of get to understand his understanding of the scriptures, right? He's directly, of course, the Holy Spirit is lighting everything up. The Holy Spirit is giving the connection, 
right? And I'm sure that Peter himself must have been surprised. Wow, you know, I, I'm quoting from Joel, <laughs> and uh, this is it. And he must have taken notes after it. But whatever, you know. Uh, so he he just quotes from scripture, you know. So he's just quoting, and you know, he stands up and talks, and uh, he just, you know, scripture is coming out, right? He's quoting from scripture, and he's saying, you know, hear these. He's making the connection. Hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God, and then goes on to explain what he did, uh, the life of Jesus, and he connects with the Psalms, and uh, and then uh, you know, so his understanding, his knowledge. Yes, he was a fisherman. Yes, he was a fish. He was in the fishing business, but with the, you know those those three years with the Lord, as you know, as there's been such an impartation of. Scripture, the words and ways of God. You know, the Lord has been teaching. He's been listening, and it is the Holy Spirit is now drawing out everything that has been put in His heart, right? And uh, and then uh, He says, uh, "Okay, uh, verse thirty-seven. It says that when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, uh, which means that they were, you know, fully convinced, convicted. Right? Something was happening deep inside." They were cut to the heart and they said, you know, what shall we do? So, you see, you know, we looked at, you know, how language produces or draws out a reaction, right? Um, yeah, Nina is saying uh, it has a powerful impact on the listeners and it causes them to act. It moves them to act. So that's what we see in verse um, uh, 37. We see they say, you know, men and brethren, what shall we do? What, what do you want us to do? Uh, and then he goes on to tell them, this is what needs to be done. You know, you believe, and that is the Great Commission. You know, it's basically the Great Commission, which the Lord Jesus gave, you know. Go, preach the gospel, uh, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and you know, etc. And that is exactly what he says. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Great Commission, and also... The Lord's instruction about waiting in Jerusalem to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He just puts it together and then says, okay, this is what you need to do. Okay, um, and, uh, and then they go on and it says here that, verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles', apostles doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers and so on. So people were added, people were meeting in homes and uh, there was some kind of preaching that is happening in the smaller or small group settings as well okay but uh, you know this is something that we uh, learn from uh, or what we observe from anything else that you noticed the was expressive mm. yeah so he was uh, he was fully convinced convicted uh, he was very clear about what he believed in, and then so uh, he just narrated everything, you know, once and for all. And if you see, it's, it's very beautiful, right? He starts from the Old Old Testament scriptures about the about what has happened, so about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and then he goes on to talk about, okay, this is why Jesus came, this is what Jesus came to do, and uh, ends with, you know, what can happen to you, right? So uh, the audience. When we start, when we look at so this this is obviously an audience who who knew the this is a Jewish audience who knew the Jewish scriptures, right? So he, for them it it immediately makes sense, right? This is what is written already there in scripture. This is what the psalmist, this is what David said, and this is what it is. So for them it was easy to relate as well. Okay, so we need to kind of understand that, right? Okay. Okay, so like this, we see that um, Acts chapter seven also. There's a you know very extensive, in-depth uh, preaching, and and I'm quite surprised when Stephen spoke that people were actually listening. Right? We read about Stephen. We see that he uh, he was a man full of faith. You know, when you look at Acts chapter six and verse five, a man full of faith, etc. And uh, you know, he went they. Uh, and the Holy Spirit did many things through them, right? Um, so, Acts chapter 7, verse 2, it starts. And he gives a very, very long sermon. You know, they're all ready to kill him. But, uh, you know, he gives a... They, they listen to the sermon. 
and it's um, it starts from where does it start from? It starts from Abraham, right? What happened to Abraham, and then he goes on and uh, and talks about the Lord um, and and so on, right? So um, and it resulted here, uh, whatever he said, it resulted in him being martyred, right? Uh, quite different from Peter's message, right? And uh, who are the audience? Again, the Jewish leaders, right? People who wanted to persecute. The high priest was there and so on, um, the others. Um, so we can say people who understood scripture, again, um, but here it's it evokes a different reaction. Okay. Um, so which means that, uh, yes, um, you know, the decision of the people or decision of the hearer can be, you know, it's their free will. Right? They can be influenced by anything. They can, uh, uh, and but he did. He conveyed what he had to convey. He conveyed the truth in in all uh, fullness. Right? He conveyed the truth, and uh, and this was the reaction. Okay, this was the response, and they, he was martyred. Okay, so similarly, we see that yes, uh, when it comes to preaching in the Bible, we see that well, they they had this habit. Of preaching either to a big audience or you know like we saw at homes they continue to you know so preaching has a place um in uh, uh, in scripture as well right and paul also paul uh, paul's ministry uh, we look at the epistles okay let's look at a few scriptures here where paul you know we know that uh, paul's emphasis was on the character of the person uh, on the messenger okay um, rather than the messenger's ability, but he also mentions about the ability of the person to communicate. Okay, um, where do we see that? You no, know, we look at these verses. First uh, Timothy chapter three, verse two. Okay, First Timothy chapter three and verse two. You know these scriptures which are there in the notes, uh, page nine, I think. Okay, so he says, a bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable. You know, till there, it's all about character. But he also mentions able to teach. Okay, so which means that that person has needs to be able to teach, convey the truth, teach the truth right to others. Okay, uh, chapter four, verse thirteen. Uh, his instruction to uh, Timothy, thirteen onwards. Give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Okay, so we can say this is actually preparation for Timothy to teach or to exhort, meaning to encourage, right? To preach. This is preparation, right? So he's saying, give attention to it, um, be intentional about it. Verse 14: Do not neglect the gift which is given to you by laying on of hands, etc. Um, verse 15, meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Verse 16, again, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Uh, continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So he's talking about the teaching, which means he's drawing Timothy back to the, the, the most important thing, which is the word of God. Right, he's saying you you better give attention to it. Right, so yeah, in your zeal you may want to preach, minister, etc. But just be uh, you know give attention to what you are, from where that is whole thing is coming. Right, what is the uh, what is the fuel, or what is the firewood that is coming? You know that is based on that. So he's being saying give attention to doctrine, uh, give attention to talk, uh, doctrine, because again the same thing. You know. Uh, if you give attention to it, if you give give yourself fully to it, your progress, you know, there, which means that you are going to, you know, there's there is going to be visible progress, and he's saying it will be evident to all. Okay, so everybody is going to notice that, and it's going to save uh, people. Your progress may be evident to all. You will save both yourself and those who hear you. Okay, so. So, which means that Paul had, I mean, Timothy had to study, read, prepare, right? All that is there, which is part of preaching, 
and preparing and so so you, does it rule out spontaneous preaching no right we know that you know when you say preparation a lot goes into it it is times of sitting and you know intentionally preparing which paul is instructing timothy it also means you know grabbing a hold of whatever the holy spirit puts in your heart a revelation of maybe a word or a truth that the holy spirit puts in your heart you know just getting a hold of it right and it can come at a moment it can come when you are listening it can come when you are just walking it can come when you are you know doing other things other mundane things maybe you're setting up cables and suddenly you know there is an insp inspiration that comes and you you latch on to that right so um so preparation actually comes um okay uh, i'm just reading nina jones the, the place was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit because of what peter spoke and how he had presented it uh, acts yeah so the place was shaken um actually that reference is when uh, when they start praying right praying together um yeah right okay so let's look at a few more uh, scriptures first timothy 5 verse 17 let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially those who labor in the word and doctrine okay what does labor mean yeah it's hard work like right? it's hard work which means that uh, what picture comes to your mind when you say labor field daily wages somebody who's lifting heavy heavy stuff right yeah that's what yeah like construction sean saying and then uh, you know for me it comes like somebody you know i've i've seen people um, you know loading these big rice sacks or something or or unloading of a truck you know big lorry and they just you know holding on to this and they're fully bare body they're sweating you know they uh, there's a hook and you put the with that hook you you know hold on to that sack and then they're rolling it off it's it's heavy work uh, it's involves sweat so what is saying you know let those who be counted a double honor worthy who labor in the word and doctrine so laboring in the word and doctrine what does it mean is it memorizing sitting and you know scripture you have the word of god it means they are actually studying yeah sorry yeah carrying the load of ministry uh, but they are also intentionally preparing learning uh, uh, for themselves and to minister to others right the minister to the church yeah so when they are preaching they've already prepared and come mm. to message will be changed and then they share something else okay fine <laughs> that's okay but the thing is you know uh, you know i'm just pointing to the fact that um, uh, about the labor that is involved you know laboring in prayer he talks about uh, epaphroditus right they are laboring in prayer um, so uh, the work that is involved preparation that is involved but bible also talks about you know the preparation of the heart belongs to man but the answer of the tongue comes from god right so uh, there is the responsibility for me to prepare for me to you know be in the word uh, giving attention which leads us back to you know the intent of homiletics which is preparation and uh, the method of preaching you know so yeah just to rule out that hey, it's it's not just always okay i just go lord speak i open my mouth you fill it you know uh, there is that intentionality involved right yeah yeah when you were when you were starting preaching stuff, how did you find your style? Because everybody's style. Has there? Hmm. Okay. 
how does one find one style okay yeah <laughs> a difference huh? uh, okay this is today it's this person <laughs> okay what happened your tooth is uh, okay okay so um yeah i mean easy to find a style is uh, just be yourself see that's because if you're trying to be like someone else um yeah i mean it's, you're going to be uh, so we can always learn from uh, different styles of what people preach and teach and so on we can always learn from that uh, and uh, so therefore we can be effective but i think um, god has created us uniquely and uh, with certain ability so just you'll be comfortable right i don't know it's more conversational than uh, and god said you know <laughs> i can do that but uh, i can't do it for a whole for you know like uh, 30 minutes um, so maybe uh, yeah <laughs> so i think uh, it, it's like that right so whatever you're comfortable with i mean i'm not saying there's there's nothing wrong in saying you know like uh, going like tdj or someone you know full sweating it out and speaking and and some people are like very just like the old time old testament prophets you know very very uh they have that preaching voice right preaching voice is different from speaking voice mm yeah that's fine that's fine the story itself is the point right it's a it's a truth that is conveyed that's fine that's fine digressing into something that's you know uh, it might be out of the preaching line that yeah you are. Mm. i mean i'm just asking practically when you had that experience how did you uh, you know come back and yeah it's difficult to make people yeah. mm. think i mean uh, listen to what you're saying i know god does all that thing but you know to make them engaged to mm. what you're uh, you know saying okay and if you're diverting is there also be diverted Correct. Right. So, how do you bring them back to? Yeah. So, so we look at that uh, when we when we you know further on we look at that. But I think uh, yeah, we just need to be intentional, uh, be a little careful because you know sometimes you know some there are some things that you want to share, right? You have the story, you have this experience, something happened, and you just we just want to share it, you know, and in no matter what the message is, and it's simply some something that's totally different, and you feel so strongly because you like it. and you you want to share it and then you start sharing it and then you realize that hey this is in no way connection to the message and it's it's difficult then because you led them somewhere and then again you're saying hey come back now i'm going back and people are saying no we we want to stay here <laughs> right so it becomes uh, yeah it's, it becomes a, a difficult thing yeah Okay, so just one more scripture, and then I think we'll have time for that. Okay, so Second Timothy chapter two and uh, verse two also. Uh, Paul again, uh, uh, you know, um, I'm sorry, uh, is it verse two? I think it's verse fifteen, right? Verse two also, yeah. Second um, Timothy chapter two, verse two, um, and these things you have heard from me among many witnesses. commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also and i think 15 it talks about rightly dividing the word of truth so over and over again in both these epistles to uh, timothy who's pastoring this um, yeah, uh, gather uh, gathering of people um, so he's again drawing him back to the the word of god which is the content right um, and so and also the importance of spending time importance of engaging our heart filling our you know later on he says right um be filled uh, or uh, let the word of god um fill your heart um, um etc so he the importance of being filled with the with the word or being rooted in the word right okay so um so we'll we'll stop here and the next class uh, we'll get into you know it's it's an interesting thing to uh, to consider that uh, the fact that uh, one second let me just uh, i think the relevance of preaching is what we are looking at you no know, is that what the note says um 
the relevance of preaching okay now it's again something uh, for us to consider because um, um the, the glory and the relevance of preaching like in today's world where there is a lot of information there's a lot of information either through social media either through billboards um so where you begin to even question you know is this really relevant today because the way people are consuming information has changed okay uh, more and more people are shifting to digital means of uh, you know consuming where books were there people are using maybe kindle and ebooks and so on so so we'll just consider a few of those thoughts right next okay we'll um, finish here thank you thank you so much god bless Thank you.